Hi and welcome to Computer Architecture Lab. Before starting today's lab, I want to introduce you to my friend Arnold. Arnold is very upset today because he has a class and he wants to introduce his students with OR gate. But unfortunately, the 7432 IC is burned and he is not able to conduct his class. And luckily, he has 7432. double zero I C beside it. So if you remember seven four double zero contains NAND gates and I would like to help uh, our friend Arnold today so we have to see what we can do for him. First if you remember that we have four OR gates in that I C but it is all burned he is in need of one OR gate. In the other hand in seven four double zero we have four NAND gates that's why we call it quad NAND gate and we want to try today if we can use number of these NAND gates for the purpose of producing one uh, OR gate. So before doing that also we have to remember the truth table of NAND gate. NAND gate has low output in one condition only whenever the two inputs are high NAND gate will provide us low output otherwise we will be having high output in the other hand we have OR gate and OR gate provides us low output only whenever we have low inputs so if we have a and b as inputs and both b have zero values it means the output will be zero otherwise we will be having high output if you notice NAND and OR gates have different outputs they are opposite to each other and today's task to help Arnold in providing him an OR gate with the help of several NAND gates. To do that, we want to supply the first NAND gate, the input of first NAND gate with same inputs A and A. So A value is 0, 0, 1, 1. We are repeating it with the second pin. As you know, first pin to the first NAND gate and second pin to the, the first NAND gate are providing the inputs. If we have these inputs for pin 1 and pin 2, what could be the output? And output will be conducted from pin number 3, right? So here we will be having low values only in these in third and in fourth row. Why? Because NAND gate give us low output whenever the inputs are high. So we are expecting to have 1, 1, 0, 0 as output of pin 3. Then we are going to supply the second NAND gate with B input. So B inputs will be supplied to pin number 4 and pin number 5, which are the inputs of NAND, second NAND gate. So what do you think the output is going to be? Definitely here we'll be having high, here low, high and low. This output will be conducted from pin number 6 because pin number 6 will give us the output of second NAND gates. So the output is expected to be 1010. To continue we have to supply the output of first NAND gate which conducted from pin number 3 and connect this output to the third NAND gate input from pin number 10 because third input has third NAND gate has two inputs from 9 and 10 pins right so 10 will be connected to the output of first NAND gate which is 3 pin number 3 and this pin number 6 which is giving us the output of second NAND gate is going to be connected to the uh, second input of third NAND gate right so what we can expect the output could be that if we have high the result is low 
then different, 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 then in these three cases it will be high. Means 0, 1, 1, and 1. Luckily, if you notice what we got from pin number 8, which is the output of the whole circuit we have up to now, is exactly same what is the output of OR gate. So notice here, inputs are A and B, inputs are A and B. Output is 0, 1, 1, and 1. Here we got 0, 1, 1, and 1. It means three NAND gates, connecting three NAND gates in the way we are we have done could give us the same result of what OR gate can give us, right? If we can do this successfully, we could solve our NAND problem. So let's go to Tinkercad and try to solve this problem. In Tinkercad, we start searching for the breadboard. You know what is breadboard at this time. We have taken a lot of uh, tutorial and labs about it. Then we can look for the IC of NAND gate, which is 7400. Here, you notice, whenever you are using these type of ICs, first we connect they, we provide some power to them. So from pin number 7, we connect to ground and pin 14 to high voltage, right? Positive. After doing this, what we are going to do, we have the first NAND gate has two inputs and one output from pin number 3 the two inputs, 1 and 2, pin number 1 and pin number 2, should be connected to same input, isn't it? In this way, we will use a switch. Do you remember why we use a switch? Instead of changing the wires between 0 and 1, by switch, by one click, you can change your input from 0 to 1, right? Just to relax ourselves. Then, see here, one is already, the input one, already connected to pin number one. But also we need to connect it to pin number two, as you see. When we short these together, it means we are connecting the same input to these two pins, right? As we have done here, A to these one and two pins, we are doing this by here, right? Right now we are providing a supply to the first input. We should make it red color just to not uh, just to clarify what is it later on we don't get confused then the output will be conducted from pin number three as we are seeing right here now we will go to the second NAND gate which is here second NAND gate inputs are four and five pins now we are taking b or second input to four making making it in different color and then we need to short this wire, which is providing uh, input to pin number four, with five, so that four and five are supplied with the second input. Pin number six will give us the output of second NAND gate. And then these two inputs from pin six and pin three should be connected to the third NAND gate. We can connect them shortly like this, and it, it will serve the purpose, but for making, uh, for making our circuit neat and clean, I will not use this way. I'm just showing you that you can use this way, but for our reference and make our uh, circuit readable by other people, uh, we will make another way which is uh, more clear. That's why I am uh, rounding this wire from pin number 3 around this IC to pin number 10, changing their colors to blue, just to know that these are uh, the wires related to first input, which is A. Right now, you can follow the path 
these are this one a input or one input is going towards two pins one and two I took the output from three I connected it to pin number 10 which is the first input of third nine gate pin number two again we need to do the same we connected this number two input to pin four and five now we need to take the output from six round it uh, around this uh, IC and give the connection to pin number nine which is the second input of third NAND gate changing the colors just to make it clear for me now I'm left with only one step the step I'm going to do right now just to get the output of third NAND gate one wire can serve the purpose but I will not be able to read if I don't use LED so the LED the use of LED in our circuits just to demonstrate the output to know when the output is high and when the output is low we need to use a resistor because LED cannot be connected directly to our output otherwise it will burn resistor will provide some resistance and will allow a little bit of current little amount of current to flow through it if you notice right now output connected to which coming from it connected to first terminal of our resistor from second terminal it's going through uh, the anode and then cathode needs needs to be grounded right and this way our circuit will be completed and closed now we are left with the last step that we need to provide a power supply we need to connect our breadboard with the out source power supply and that's what we used to do it is the same uh, procedure which you know positive with positive and negative with negative I always try to make my circuit readable by others and also remember when we will take some quizzes and in practical or in lab we will also care about these things so kindly take care of making your circuit clean neat and this will show how much you understand and how much you are confident so we are expecting the same uh, work done by you we are going now to connect the two axis points of these of this breadboard uh, so that all these holes will be providing me a power supply and i can access power supply from a, uh, either end of grid board right so i'm almost done what will be remaining for me just to test my circuit when i want to test and before see i forgot one connection here the second uh, input i didn't provide some power to it so always be sure your circuit is complete now when i start simulating i'm testing when it is zero zero it's giving me zero which is correct one zero giving me one and zero one is supposed to give me one which is correct at the end one one is supposed to give me one at this moment we are done with this lab <laughs> and we made our friend uh, Arnold happy in solving his problem don't forget you have a task you have to do this uh, experiment by yourself and uh, you will get two in one in fact when you do it because you'll get some marks and you will get some experiment uh, experimental knowledge right how to do it if you watch this video don't like or share you just need to prepare your work prepare your circuit and we will see it uh, soon and you will be uh, marked based on your circuit so kindly prepare yourself uh, you will get some instructions uh, shortly please refer to your times 
to see the instructions of your quiz. Uh, if you have any question, feel free to see and watch this video again and again. And wish you good luck.